Welcome back to Upper Michigan Today. We are learning about the history of art and the legacy of Anita Myland. So she came to Marquette, started all of these events and um, the history of Marquette as we kind of know it here. What happened next? Well, she was very involved in parades, pageants. Okay. You know, she thought we ought to be having fun. It shouldn't be all work. <laughs> And so she was always doing costumes. She loved to dress up. And in fact, we're encouraging people, certainly not required, if people want to dress up for the event. You saw one of those pictures. There she is in the long gloves. You know, um, she enjoyed that. She put together every pageant, every beauty pageant in the UP. She was busy. She was in charge of, she was judging it. She was taking the people who won downstate to participate in their pageants. Um, she never learned to type. She never learned to drive a car, um, and yet she was just incredibly productive. Um, These are yes, some of the shots during World War II, and I think she was she's wearing a civil defense sticker on her uh, shoulder there, and even her husband was really involved with with civil defense too. That's her. Uh, it's one of the supermarkets in town, and yeah, she had her own daughter. Um, went to Washington during the war and they had a victory garden that was one of that's part of their victory garden work um, this is a canteen at the palestra for GIs um, at one point they talked about they needed what was it how many hostesses looking yeah. for 200 or something hostesses right. to help out at the canteen that's Anita standing on the right that's another just a book club she was involved with uh, right and this is the centennial all the costumes that's her on the bottom right 1949, involved with making the costumes, the parades, all that. Well, and she wrote a, I mean, you know, there she is an artist, she's teaching art, um, but she also wrote a play for the centennial. You know, she just, nothing, <laughs> nothing scared her off. You know, if she thought there should be a play, she's going to write a play, she's going to put it on, she's going to do the costumes. You know, she was just gung-ho all the time. <laughs> and now there's a number of theatrical companies in the Marquette area. So her impacts really go oh, beyond yeah. just art, though. Beyond visual arts, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, I mean, absolutely. You, even music and uh, theater and all that. The Young kinda. Authors Conference. You know, I'm, even that, one of her last things she was involved in is she was helping organize the Young Authors Conference. And the theme was going to be all the kids were writing about cats. You know, so she was just teaching them about cats and poems about cats and writing about cats. I mean, just all over the place. She really wanted to find that spark of creativity. She really believes all of us have a spark somewhere. And her goal was to make sure that you, you develop that and shared it. Um, and that was really her mission. I had no idea that she was involved in the Young Authors Conference. Of course, I grew up going to market area public schools, and that was a big event that we attended every single year. And that was one of my favorite parts of the school year. Yeah. Wow. Yep, yep. I just all in need of so many things that we don't even think of, we owe to her. Um, she started a musical group, and then she would combine the musical group with the art. Mm -hmm. so that she would have people painting to music. <laughs> um, <Wow. you> know? <laughs> what do you think Anita would say about where we are now? Um, you know, we were, I was just telling you guys during one of the breaks that Marquette was named a cultural mecca for the arts. What would you, what would she say about where we are today? She'd be amazed, just the galleries. And, yeah. and so many of the artists that are still working, like after 47 years, guys that started back in the 70s, uh, Ed Rizak and Julie Rizak still have a studio out at the Presque Isle Station. Yeah. Uh, Terry uh, Guilfoy and Mike Horton are still artists here in Margaret. So 40 years later, we got Beth Milner who came out of that whole thing. I mean, it's just you know, uh, unbelievable how, the, how it grew. And there was no yeah. galleries back then. Now look at how many galleries we have. We have so many. Yeah. <laughs> and at some point she was speaking to a UP development conference and saying you can't buy any UP souvenirs made in the UP. All the souvenirs you can buy in the UP are just something made in Japan, which mm -hmm. is what where stuff was made then. Right. Boy, now, you know, there's shops all over the place featuring crafts and art and jewelry made in the UP. I mean, this was, this was her vision, and we're realizing it. A hundred years later. A hundred years later. It's, it's really incredible to see, and um, even if you're not somebody that is a, an immediate appreciator of the arts, I feel like if you're in Marquette, 
you can't step out into town without accidentally stumbling upon art oh and culture. Goodness. Even if you just go into a local gift shop, mm -hmm. there are plates and bowls made oh. by local potters. There oh. are locally crafted artworks hanging up in the medical center. You know, it's art is everywhere around here in Marquette. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to see. We do have to take another break, but we're going to continue this conversation about Anita Myland and her lasting legacy in Marquette when we come back.